purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz, but Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and read the psalm with me. I will read to the asterisk and the congregation will finish the verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Mananessah, restore us, O God of hosts. O Lord God of hosts, You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show your and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. And so will we never turn away from you. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show light your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from Paul's letter to the epistle to, to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the living God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, please be seated. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Matthew knew this prophecy from the prophet. Isaiah, and Matthew recognized its message as a message for Matthew's own time. The message Matthew heard or saw was God is with us, and with us, even though it didn't look that way right then. If there is also a message for us in our time, we need to go back and understand the message from Isaiah, the original message. Isaiah's prophecy goes back 734 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. It was a prophecy given to a king, Ahaz, who was shaken with fear because of an unsettled and chaotic world order. Superpowers were threatening the small nation of the earth. And there were superpowers in those days. And for fear of that, alliances were being formed. For Ahab, the question was, should he form an alliance with one of the superpowers for, for aid against the other enemies that were threatening his kingdom? Should he get in league with the devil and join with a dangerous superpower? like a minnow asking for assistance from a shark. You know how those things always end up. How many of you have been in a situation where you were so frightened, so concerned, that you were even unable to ask for help? How many of you have been in a situation in which you were so frightened that you couldn't even receive advice or hear advice or ask for help. So you just ended up just not not doing anything, helpless. How many of you? Yes. That's what Ahaz is going through at this time. And Isaiah's counsel to him, which was a message from God to Ahaz, was, was simply this. Stay the course. Stay the course. Trust 
in the God who is with us, Emmanuel. The nations you're worried about aren't as strong as they look. By the time somewhere, maybe it was Isaiah's wife, maybe it was Ahaz's wife, we're not sure. But one of a woman is with child. And Isaiah is offering as a sign of the trustworthiness of God the fact that by the time the child is weaned, by the time the child is able to eat solid food, curds and honey, the nations that are threatening you, Ahaz, those nations will have been reduced to rubble. Stay the course. Trust in what the God who is with you, the God you know, the God who has spoken to you for all of your life. That's what it meant for Matthew. For Matthew, the baby to be born to the young woman engaged to Joseph is more than just God with us. For Matthew, the message is that this baby is God in us, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God could be trusted to protect his people, to protect his people from danger, just as God could be trusted in the time of Isaiah. But this time, God was coming into the world himself as one of us. So, so God is not just with us, but in us. And so, for us, in our time, the message is this. With God in us, God is not just the solution, but we are part of the solution. Through the work of of this God-child who will be born, we are redeemed. How many of you, how many of you remember, how many of you remember S and H green stamp? How many of you? Okay, so what, 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 what did you do with S and H green stamp? You redeemed them. You took them where? Where did you take them? A redemption center. Exactly. And. What was going on there? Like, we got to understand redemption. These are real words. These aren't just magic words. We're talking about redemption. At a redemption center, you had these worthless, these worthless stamps, and you took them to the redemption center, and they became a toaster. <laughs> they became something you could use. They became something valuable. And she, Jesus Christ redeems us. In that same way, we become something, something valuable. We become empowered to stand before God, to stand with God in the face of all threats from the devil, to stand with God in the face of all threats from those who seem powerful and who brag about it. The message for us is a message of hope. The message is, this hopeful message is, stay, stay the course. Trust in God who is with us and in us. Trust in the God who by becoming one of us has entered history and made it eternal. Resist the messages of bullies. Because although... They look like winners now. They will never have the last word. Never. Amen. Amen. and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We 
believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God of the Father, God from God, by light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and was not child. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge us living in the dead. And to see the Lord at our hands. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the pure life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. He is not only the merits of the divinity of the Senate, he glorifies the resurrection of the dead man, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and in the diocesan cycle of prayer, for the Church of the Holy Spirit, Plymouth, and St. Mark's Church, Ashland, where Bishop Hirschfeld is visiting this morning, the Reverend Randy Dales, priest in charge. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Katie Martz, Michelle Chavez, Nathan Walton, Dick Wood, Derek Moore, Frank Tibbetts, Stephen Batty, Roger Sheehy, Elliot Waller, and Jenny LaPointe. We pray for the safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for the comfort of their families. For all who pray for peace worldwide. For assurance and blessing to those looking for work and their families. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We we pray for those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today. Kay, Deb, Corrine, Erica, Alita, Greg, Bob, Robert, Teresa, Marilyn, Jack, Cletus, Carter, Harold, Lefty, John, Judith Ann, Sophia, Chris, Sarah, David, Sherry, Ellie. We pray for all who face the fallout of alcohol, drug, and physical abuse, or love someone who does. We pray for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray from our book of remembrance for Mildred Rydal Whipple, Howard Edwin Doster, Jr. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. 
Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
continues on page 367. (laughs) 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and said, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 